Good morning. Hey, can it come to the place where God even refuses to deliver his people? We're looking at Jeremiah 18, verses 12 to 17. Here's the reading. And they said, that is hopeless. So we will walk according to our own plans, and we will every one obey the dictates of his evil heart. Therefore, thus says the Lord, ask now among the Gentiles who has heard such things. The virgin of Israel has done a very horrible thing. Will a man leave the snow water of Lebanon, which comes from the rock of the field? Will the cold flowing waters be forsaken for strange waters? Because my people have forgotten me, they have burned incense to worthless idols, and they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways from the ancient paths to walk in pathways and not on a highway. To make their land desolate and a perpetual hissing, everyone who passes by it will be astonished and shake his head. I will scatter them as with an east wind before the enemy. I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. Again, hot as a pistol. Can God's people come to that place where he refuses to deliver them? It seems like they can. The kingdom of Judah has been plainly shown God's path for them. They're not responding in the right way. In fact, their response is, we refuse to turn. They say it's hopeless. They say, we're just going to do what our own hearts, our own hearts dictate to us. The margin reading here says, each one will do according to the imagination of his evil heart. That's what you've got. Straight out, open, in your face, uh, in plain sight, rebellion. So we're going to get again that harsh treatment we've been we've been expecting. God's relentless pursuit, his his continuous seeking, of, you know, his mercies have gotten no strong response, no big repentant response out of this. Nothing like that. Instead, they're pursuing their own desires with with complete abandon. So God has a promise for them. In the day when they come crawling to him and say, oh, please suddenly save us, he's not going to deliver them. They're going to get, it's not that he rejects them, but they're going to get this kind of tough love experience. He's going to be very forthright with them. Here it is. I mean, it's in black and white. It's right here. Jeremiah told them. They've turned from the snow waters, from the fresh, pure path to a, a strange pattern, a strange path, which again brings us back to ourselves as we usually do. We come back and say, well, how could this apply in, in my case, God forbid. Well, it appears that God will allow us to stumble. And it says right here in uh, verse 15, they have caused themselves to stumble in their ways. That's not only something they could do, that's something we could foolishly do. We could pursue our own pathway with such abandon that God finally allows us to stumble uh, in our own wrong path. So we want to pray that that won't happen. We pray that we'll be uh, seeking God's, the insight from this word and find his pathway for us. Oh, please, may it not be like we're reading here. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be uh, awake, help us to be alert, help us to be receptive, help us to have ears that listen, help us to hear, Lord, as you call, help us to respond to, to your mercies, help us to learn how to be your faithful servants, even in these rather strange times we are in today. Help your people, Lord. We don't want to be left behind. We don't want to be behind your pathway for us. So please, Lord, help us not to stumble in our own strange paths. Instead, Lord, show us your path and, and put a desire in us to follow in your path. We ask it in, in Jesus' name, Lord. Please help us. May God help us before we ever arrive at a path like this one we've just been reading about. God be with you.